thank everybody for coming. Um, I have a couple of things I need to tell you to turn off the cell phones. And if you can stand for the pledge.
and there's a couple of the folks in the audience, I believe, Mark's here. So they've had a chance to integrate in a variety of ways. Um, I do want to tell you a little bit generally about our students. They come from all over the Oxnard Plains area. We have a couple of students that actually come from uh, the Camarillo area, but their mother is a member of our chamber. So if you have, a, if you are a member of the Oxnard Chamber, your students in your life are welcome to apply to our program. But our youngest student isn't just graduate or just is about to graduate. School's actually in. They're kind of playing hooky, but their dad is with them, so that works out. It's a sixth grader. Started off at 11 years old. Our oldest students are seniors who are graduating, and uh, they're 18 years old. So we had a variety. We had people in seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, and twelfth grade. And one of the dynamic aspects of this is bringing students in that already self-identify as people who want to be entrepreneurs or start their own businesses. They have to go through a three-prong interview process, which they talk with me. They also talk with another member of the uh, chamber community, and then their parents come in and visit with us. And if you're in, let's say, sixth grade, or for me, even a senior in high school, that's a pretty daunting experience. So that in and of itself is pretty important. But they come in with this mindset about entrepreneurialism. Some of our students knew exactly what they wanted to do. I'm kind of thinking of Jesus over there. Came in, he knew what his business was. He already had started doing this and had some ups and downs with it. Kind of made some good inroads and the things that he wanted to do. So there was no question. It stayed that way the whole way through. There was a couple of students that came with businesses. Um, like, I, I want to own a grocery store. I want to own a community grocery store and I want to make this certain kinds of products available for my students. Well, there's no way we could have done that project and finish it and get a small business up and running by the time June came, for example. We started in November. So how do you keep that fantastic idea and yet build skills to build another small business? So for those students, they had to translate the big, big, big idea into something that was workable and to use their skills. Um, then there were students that changed. Their, I'm thinking of Rocky Gonzalez, who had, we, every day we would go, What's the idea today, Rocky? He would have a new idea almost every week, and they were all terrific. Was it one of the blue salsa? Blue salsa, Rocky's blue salsa. And we go, we love it, we love it. What's the recipe? Because I don't have a recipe, I just like the idea of blue salsa. <laughs> so, but he was, he was one, it just tells you how that entrepreneurial mind works. It can work in many different ways. He ended up having a pet nanny service. And by the way, when Rocky went to the trade show, Kind of a tall, handsome guy. It's sort of funny and sort of endearing at the same time. He was so overwhelmed with people that came up and said, Hi, uh, your name is? And they would make a Rocky and go, What's your business? And he was getting the video all excited. To, and they say, Well, listen, here's my card. I own an apartment complex. I, I work at a hotel. We could have three or four hundred people, you know, that we could send to you for this service. So that was pretty exciting. He was pretty overwhelmed. And he came back like, well, what do I do now? I have people that want to buy my service. So that's very exciting. And what it, do I need this to laugh? The students use that one. Can you hear me OK? OK. Um, and then just to go on another realm, uh, Dr. Gonzalez is here, his niece and daughter, some of our youngest participants. I'll let them tell you their idea, but they actually are pursuing a patent. For an idea, it's a general idea, and they are, they did a lot of research on it. Had some good help from home and others. A mentor, a couple of mentors helped them, uh, but the idea, which they'll explain in a moment, is not something that they themselves are going to develop. This is how sophisticated they probably don't know exactly how sophisticated they were, but they were really jumping because they came up with a general idea. They did some research to see if this was somewhere else in the world, and they did find it here and there. But the idea was, this particular thing, is that we don't have to develop this. We just need to bring this general idea to someone. Let them know sort of some general marketing views of it. And then we apply for the patent. And then we find people that will be interested in taking this and developing this on their own. So I don't know. That's a sixth grader and a seventh grader. What do you think? Pretty interesting. So uh, you guys know what's going to come up. And I could talk to you about a lot of different things. But before I bring some of the students up, 
I would like to say that this is a project that involves many, many people. I would like to particularly thank the Oxnard Chamber of Commerce and particularly our, our what I call our angel, uh, Nancy Lindholm, because she believed in this idea and the students, the staff is wonderful. Uh, Mr. Faber, I forgot where, where, where he ended up sitting there. Thank you for the executive board and everybody in the chamber for believing in this idea because a new idea like this, drawing students from so many different schools and age groups, really requires a leap of faith. But they were not the only ones supporting us, and I just like to for a moment to, I want to make sure I don't miss anyone who I feel is so, so important. The Jean Haas Foundation, would you like to stand up? <laughs> business, but he's a professor of accounting at Oxnard College. So we're very grateful, Cynthia, for, I could go on to all three of you, these organizations, their support. Um, I also like to thank, and they're not in our audience, but the California Community College has an initiative called Doing What Matters. And it's money that goes to what we call the pipeline, either um, middle school to high school to college and these are preparing students for for entrepreneurial endeavors and we received a gift from them this year and they have been incredible i'd like to thank them as well um, uh, oh my goodness i know i'm going to forget someone very important but umqua bank i also like to thank umqua bank for being one of our investor panel supporters early on so thank you uh, for everything. This is a, a community endeavor and so before the students come up and say hello, I'm going to invite a couple of people just to give you a vignette of the different roles people can have. Yes. I just want to thank uh, Ventura County Credit Union as well. Oh they yes, thank you. Later on in the cycle. Oh they did. Where is Ventura County? Oh, thank you. <laughs> from various people in the credit union and advice along the way and that's immeasurable thank you so much for that so I thought I would invite uh, both Cynthia Herrera and Suzanne Scara just for a moment um, because Suzanne was one of our mentors she's just going to talk for a moment a little bit about her view of the students and Cynthia will talk just for a moment her enthusiasm gets us all going and then I'd like to introduce students so if you could come up thank you Good morning. Uh, I don't think I need the, the microphone either, but if you can't hear me, raise your hand. Um, I had the pleasure of working with the students, and I came in not knowing what was going to happen or where, what level they were at. And I was so impressed with each one of them and their ideas and how they executed these ideas. They were, I mean, this is a daunting process, and it's you're taking someone that uh, has some, some of them have jobs and some of them knew a little bit about business, but you're taking them from the very beginning to the very end. And I was so impressed with all of them. And they're also their ability to work with each other and help each other. So that's what I have to say and congratulations to all of you. accused of having an indoor voice. <laughs> um, I would just like to say that Oxnard College really looks at putting the community back in the college. And we had the opportunity to work with a lot of businesses and sponsor these students that really are going to promote the economic growth of our future here in our community. So thank you Susan Cabral for all your hard work. She dedicated many, many hours every week 
for 17 weeks um, through this process. So thank you very much. And I think you're going to see that this is going to be a very prosperous program for our community. Thank you, Sandy. young entrepreneurs to kind of line up, uh, come on up, all of you, I'll just kind of line up, and as uh, the students come up, I'd like to also say thank you, and just am so appreciative of the many students I got from the Union High School District. We had a particular high school that we had a special relationship with, Dr. Samakian, we had a special relationship, particularly with Channel Islands High School. It was a thrill working with him. And of course, Channel Islands High School is right across the street from Oxnard College. And if, um, one of the students that is graduating this year from Channel Islands has made a decision to go to Oxnard College. So there's a lot of wonderful things that are happening. Oh, what a group. So ladies and gentlemen, you've done this many times, so we're going to do it a little differently this morning. Uh, I'm going to have a point where you can also ask some questions of our, our young entrepreneurs. Um, I know I don't need this, but perhaps you do. I think the first thing we'll do is, you know that little, not quite the elevator speech? Introduce yourselves, tell us what your title is, what your business is, and maybe in this case what school you go to, and then I'll go through and pick a few people to share more deeply. Angela, you ready? Okay, well, remember slow but clear. Okay, um, good morning. My name is Angeles Montero, and I'm a, I'm a BS senior in Channel Island High School. And my business is World Ethica. Huh? We're in here. Um, we're Athletica. We're Athletica. Oh, okay. We're Athletica. I told you not. Yes. So you might want to give an extra line. Uh, we're familiar with our titles, but go ahead and give one extra line about your business. How's that? Okay. Good morning. I'm Ashley Mendez. I'm also going to be a senior at Turner Evans High School, and I'm the executive director of Mujeres Worth It. It's for abusive for abusive environments for women 16 to 25. Um, good morning. My name is Celeste Rivera. Okay. I'm. I'm going to be a senior at John Allen's High School and I'm the co-CEO of Dear Pen Pal and we are Pen Pal Service who connects you with somebody anywhere in the world based on your needs and requirements. Good morning, my name is Diana Rahner. I am the co-CEO of Dear Pen Pal. It is a Pen Pal National Service and I'm going to be a senior at John Allen's High School next year. Um, good morning, my name is Jesus and I am going to be a senior at John Allen's High School. And my business is um, called Sweet Spheres. And um, my business sells um, K pops. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bianca Montes, and I'm the CEO of Fiesta Piantas. Um, I'm going to be a senior at Channel Islands High School, and my business offers personalized handcrafted piantas. Um, hello, my name is Denise Lara, and I'm the CEO of Style by Del Lara, and my business sells women accessories. I'm going to be a senior at Channel Islands High School. Hi, my name is Joey Ujoku, and I'm the CEO of Gay Chronicle, and I'm, my company involves <coughs> video games, and I'm going to be a junior in Real Mesa High School. Hello, my name is Joey Ujoku, and I'm the CEO of Game Chronicle. My business involves game development, and I am going to be an 8th grader in Oaks Christian Middle School. Uh, my name is Vincent Ariana. I'm the CEO of Art Nouveau. It's an artistic ironwork business, and I'm a, a freshman at Rio Mesa High School. Good morning. I'm Carmen Gonzalez. I'm a sixth grader who goes to R.J. Frank Middle School, and I'm the co-CEO of Perfect Height. Good morning. I'm Sumana Perez. I am a seventh grader at Rio Vista Middle School, and I am the co-CEO of Perfect Height. And a it's an innovative shoe with an adjustable heel and ball where you can make it into a flat. That's nice. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go ahead and read. I would like to read to you again the names of those businesses. Um, and there's three students that are not here this morning, just so you hear the width and depth of the businesses before the students go further. Uh, we did have uh, Diana and uh, also um, Celeste did the Dear Pen Pal service. When they talk to you, it is 
their motivation was about linguistics. They were interested in teaching uh, English and integrating back other languages like Japanese and Chinese. So their pen pal service goes throughout the world. Their hopes are to be localized, but then later have uh, associates in different parts of the world. And they do have two contacts now uh, in Taipei. So they're very excited about that. Uh, Vincent already told you his. Raise your hand when I talk about you. Art Nouveau Ironworks, um, just so you know, it is an artistic endeavor. And uh, he has a particular line that tells us all about who his client was. And so tell us, who is your client? Uh, people discerning? discerning customers from Malibu to Santa Barbara. That should tell you what we're talking about. Discerning customers, great. And then Perfect Tight, uh, Ziamara and Carmen, uh, they are the ones that are pursuing patent information at this time. So, um, Joey and Jordan, uh, Game Protocol, um, that's been an exciting adventure. Um, yes, go ahead, Jordan. Say, say, say anything you want to about, I think your mom was going to stand up and tell us something dynamic. Go ahead and tell us something that happened today at this luncheon. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm a member of Dr. Bustle and Family Practice, practice but these are my two sons, I'm so proud of them. And I just happened to meet Deborah for the first time. She um, is, a, is the marketing liaison for MX4D, and she was asking, what is a long game? And so they were telling her, and then I told him about the game, Game Protocol, and she said, you know, my company is actually looking for um, that type of uh, um, games that focuses on, I don't want to, Okay, okay. It focuses, their, their games focuses on uh, video games that teach good morals. And so she, her company is actually looking for things like that. So we've already made a connection. So that's great. Great guys. <laughs> Thank you. is style it by Delora and she can she may or may not share we may not have time for more than a few people this morning but that business is not only about putting accessories and shoes together with that right outfit for a certain age young lady um, but it's also about um, you know offering a product and being very positive about being a young woman in today's society so many of our students are looking at very positive messages integrated throughout their businesses um, Ashley is going to, will be speaking about Mohair is Worth It, but note that we have a couple of people that do have nonprofit endeavors. I'm very pleased to, to hear that. Um, when we do this program and across the United States, we don't choose what people's businesses are, or we don't choose what idea they have. We don't choose uh, whether they're going to patent something. They go through a long process of selecting their idea, but it truly comes from them. And we know that nationally, the statistics shows that most of our classes in YEA across the nation, at least one to four, have some sort of uh, endeavor that affects people and our nonprofit, but money-making endeavors. So good job, mm -hmm. Ashley, for that. Mm -hmm. um, so Wear It Athletica. Wear It Athletica is uh, going to be a soccer endeavor. It, again, has two prongs to it. It's over the internet. It's for athletic clothing for particularly young women in the Oxnard Plains area, but it also is filled with positive messages uh, on their website, so it encourages young women to do all that they can through athletics in the areas of their lives. Uh, Fiesta Pinatas, we're going to hear about in a moment, over there behind me. Uh, Jennifer Morphin is not here. Some of you may have heard her speak. Future Attorneys Learning Law. She wants to go to law school. As a, she's working in her law office this morning. Um, but her endeavor is a program that she wants to do through sponsorships, uh, through various lawyers and attorneys and legal, uh, and some legal colleges, law colleges in the area that help students who are in high school prepare for legal careers. Because as she says statistically, which I think is great, she did her homework on this, that uh, just a huge number, Mark, maybe you could help us, it's like 60% of people that say they're going to go into law school actually go step into it. Uh, many of them either don't practice law or they never complete the program. So she feels, yeah, she feels that there's a lot of students out there that really could be doing that work, but they need to be introduced. So that's another very exciting nonprofit that we have. Um, Rocky's Pet Nanny Service, you've already heard about. CSUN's Awesome Sauce. I don't need to go too much into that. Isaiah is not here, but I hope that you have read your June edition. Because if you're wondering, one of our youngest students is right here, Isaiah, and he has been wanting to cook for years. 
he's interested in the kitchen, he makes all kinds of things, he's come up with two sauce recipes. One sweet and one savory, as he likes to say. And, uh, but his concern, I don't know if there's a member of the family with a health issue, but his concern is that it be low sodium and made out of healthy uh, food materials. So his is all about low sodium good sauces. So we got to try it, right ladies and gentlemen, his sweet sauce? It was pretty good. So there. And uh, Jesus has already talked to you about his cake pop business. I just want to say that he was one of our students that knew immediately what he wanted to do. And he's actually practiced that businesses on some of the campuses in our area. So, so very good. And now what I'd like to do is choose three businesses to talk. And I think we'll talk to Dear Pen Pal since you're holding this. Tell us a little bit about you, Jesus. Hello, my name is Diana Rama, and I'm the co-CEO of Dear Pen Pal. And I'm Celeste Ryan, the co-CEO of Dear Pen Pal. Dear Pen Pal is a free international matching service. Um, we're digitally based, and we uh, connect you with a pen pal based on your requirements. We'll help you fill, fill out a survey and have you say, oh, I want my partner to be this gender or uh, be in this mindset for the future, whatever you want, so you can help connect with somebody that you actually want to talk to and not a straight. Dear Pen Pal emphasizes on connecting people that are interested in language and culture from other countries. So depending on what language or culture you are interested in, that's what will match you accordingly. Thank you. <laughs> Do you have a website? Or working on creating it. Okay. How will we be communicating? Like if I want to speak with somebody from Taipei, how do I how does that work? Oh. Oh, we just match you up with somebody and then you could choose either um if you want to do snail mail or over the internet. We might have a chat uh, based up there. Is that like a it. translator tool? There yeah, there might be. We're still working on that though. So how will you monetize that business? Like with money or with a nonprofit? It's a nonprofit. A nonprofit. Oh, nonprofit. Okay. Sponsors, right? Oh yes, we're working on sponsors. Okay. Um, good question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um. Hello, my name is Jojo Joke. I'm the CEO of Game Cargo, and Game Cargo is a game. <laughs> 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 Hello, and I'm Joey Ujoku, CEO of Game Cargo. Game Cargo is a game development company, and we, don't, we develop games that teach models to the players. And that's, that's one of the things that makes us different from other game designers. We're mainly different because we're actually young and we um, have experience with playing the video games, so we have more experience and what the kids will want to play more than like um, the other game designers out there, like Mojang. And... <laughs> Basically, we teach games that have good morals to help kids in life. Yeah, so the players will get educated while playing our games and they have more to offer because uh, there have been studies conducted on other games and they cause they cause a lack of attention span and they reduce academic performance. Bar games will have no, none of those effects. They will only teach morals and education. Thank you. Do you have any questions of Game Protocol? So what made you, what was your passion about wanting to do something that helped kids with their morals? Well, one day my brother and I were playing video games, and I thought, what if there was a video game that could actually teach kids, teach kids fundamentals of life instead of just draining their brains so much? <laughs> 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 you tried that? <laughs> uh, yes. Have you started like specifically putting together a game that you have in mind, like a storyboard or something like that? Uh, yes. We started making a demo for our video game. We our software's Unity is free. So are you developing it or do you have programmers that are helping you like develop the game itself? A uh, few of my friends are helping me actually developing it, but yes, I am being active during the development. Thank you. Do you have something to, sh to actually show people the demo? Uh, it's yeah. not with me at the moment, but I do have it, yes. Okay. 
after you sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we have to as part of the course. So. Okay, how about let's do one or two more? I'm so excited about our students here. Tamara Perez. And we are co CEOs of Perfect Height. Morning. Have you, do you currently have like 50 different shoes in your car that you just want to get rid of right now? Uh, or you're on a long day at work and you just want to change your heels into a pair of flats but you can't because you have to go all the way downstairs, get into your car, go all the way back upstairs, change your shoes, and then you have something important to go do, go all the way back downstairs, grab your heels, go all the way back upstairs, put them on. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Or men, do you have a special woman in your life who's always complaining to you that she's got the perfect pair of shoes? But let's face it, she's not walking in us. Well, perfect head is a perfect solution for you. Our product is an innovative shoe with an adjustable heel and ball that can also turn into a flat. Our product also comes with a stylish silk pink handbag. We only have one competitor and that is... Data Light. Although theirs can also change the height of the heel, theirs cannot change into a flat. Plus, they cost way too much. It's $1,900. Oh, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we plan to get a design patent and we're going to sell the rights to a shoe company who is willing to produce our product. Our logo is a gorgeous red rose and our motto is like it, love it, change it. <laughs> and that's, why, huh? that's why perfect height is perfect for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you have to put in all the extra heels and the rubber piece as a flat. Nice. So you can click them on and there's going to be a button to take them on and off. Very cool. cool. Do we have time for one more? One more. Okay. one more? Okay, thank you. I wanted to also tell you that uh, Procter & Gamble, as you know, has engineers and uh, we had a couple of engineers over this time period talk and integrate with our students, not only to tell them about the engineering field, but also to help them with some of the dynamics of creating products, right? You would, and so if students don't know something, we try to go to engineers to give us a little insight. Uh, and we do know that they, you know, they will eventually have to hire someone, perhaps, to help them with the service of the actual development. But the idea itself is what we are really encouraging our students. So I thought that was dynamic. We have time for one more. Who would, without me choosing, who would like to stand up and do theirs? <laughs> oh, is Bianca? Are we saying Bianca? Okay, Bianca, the winner of the Sam's Club Award. Good morning, my name is Bianca Montes, and I'm CEO of Fiesta Piñatas. We offer personalized handcrafted piñatas of all shapes, sizes, and colors. Um, I'm the third generation in my family with this business, and um, right now, I, right now I, I usually just help my dad making piñatas, and we share, we have our piñatas in a couple stores. And I want to expand my business and have my own store, but first I want to start with sharing other stores. And how is about the glue? Oh, um, the glue we use is we it's homemade, so I just buy the products and I make it at home, and it only takes about 15 minutes. So um, a lot of the products we use, um, they're like we we make them or. Homemade goods yeah. going into that, which adds to the tradition of the family, right? You have a couple questions, please. <laughs> yeah. I know during the investor panel, you, you talked about the difference in the quality between your product and some unnamed other retail outlets. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to mention the quality? Um, I have better quality piantas than other stores because instead of um, just um, instead of Instead of just using newspaper and glue to hold it together, we use cardboard, so it lasts a lot longer than store-bought piñatas. And um, in, st like, we, in the stores, they usually don't look, they don't look too realistic, but we spend a lot of time in putting detail into it, into whatever shape you wanted it or whatever character you chose. So you said this is a family business. 
how many of these can you produce in the home? Do they go into, if you've got a contract for like Whole Foods, how could you mass produce them if you're looking to really expand into other sources? Well, a lot of people in my family know how to make them, so we make them. My little sisters know how to make them too, and so does my brother, so if they want to work with you, they can. One more question. A birthday party coming up soon, where can I do it? Um, well, I can give you my number after this and <laughs> talk about it. Okay. Thank you. I will say uh, with Bianca, also all of our students had to create business plans which included financials in it. And actually they're a little bit, I think, shy and excited to be here, but all of those questions had to be, that you asked, by the way, excellent to hear them from others besides us are included and actually Bianca had a month by month what she thought she could do the first year and then jumping into the second year, so this year building business. So they really have thought through some of those questions, but to hear it asked from the audience, I think it's been really valuable. And by the way, we won't mention that other business, but they gave you an award anyway, so that was <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Thank you. I, and again, this represents 12 out of the 18. We're so very proud of them. We're going to help them throughout the summer with their awards that they receive from the investment panel and you know, support them through this process. But we also have some nomination forms over on the table. If you have a young person in your life who you think is dynamic or just has that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, we have, do we have any shy people in this group? Did we start off with any shy people? There are a few, right? A few? So they don't have to be outgoing. Uh, they may become outgoing after this, but we just encourage you to send along some terrific young people to us and we would love to work with them. Um, our program starts again in the end of October of next year and it ends in the beginning of May. And again, I want to thank you all so much on behalf of our students. Thank you so much. Connections. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm Nancy Lindholm, CEO of the Chamber, for the, those of you I haven't met. Um, and I'd like to take a couple of minutes and, and introduce a couple of new members that we have with us this morning who could come up and do their uh, quick 30 second presentation. And from a business right in the tower here, we have Denture Magic Rosie Dental. And I think two of the doctors are going to come up and say. Say a couple words. Maybe I'll just Yes, I do know. Intimately. My name is Sean. I'm Dave Sean. I'm That's a good thing. Sorry. What I'd like to do is uh, I'd just like to do a premium denture service basically because of neck issues this is what i've learned myself too i came back from virginia back to california and i was looking for a good gentle dentist to associate with uh good dentures typically have implants under most of them do anyway so i needed somebody that was good at implants and good at a to z dentistry and i found him and it's dr sid rossi okay. my name is sid rossi um i'm actually not new to the chamber i used to be here about eight nine years ago and uh I used to practice in this building and it was really, really good to come back here again. Uh, I am, when I'm not here, I'm actually a faculty at UCLA School of Dentistry, that's where I went to school. And uh, uh, actually, one of the things that I really hated to do in my office was dealing with dentures. And uh, when, when we met and uh, he was telling me that that's what he likes to do only, I'm like, okay, this, this is going to be a good marriage. Uh, for those of you, I mean, I, I have seen familiar faces. Uh, we were intimate as uh, as, in, in as in Invisalign, yes. We were an Invisalign intimate uh, partner. So uh, 
it's good to be back in, uh, in, in, in the community and it's good to be back in this building. And uh, I'm very impressed when I was a member before, it wasn't, there was no breakfast. <laughs> so, and we always like to eat so you can see I'm not shy and eating. So, <laughs> so we'll see you next month. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> From Manpower? Come on up, Stacey. She's right in the neighborhood as well. Good morning, my friends and my future friends. My name is Stacey Morata, and I have the extreme honor of being an AD wife. This honor has landed us in our final destination in the base of Port Wainini. So I'd like to welcome to you to my family and introduce you to my new position as the brand new branch manager of Manpower. We are right downstairs, so come visit us in the food court anytime you come to a habit or Cafe Ronelli, and swing by and say hi. We like to get to know you and what your passion is. My personal passion is standing right in front of us, our youth. I donate a lot of time to helping high school students reach their potential as leaders on my spare time, and I'm getting familiar with the education committee and I'm sure I'm going to get to know all of you too. So thank you so much for your time, and I welcome you to be part of my family. Thank you, and welcome to the Chamber. And uh, it's my pleasure to announce our Chamber Ambassador of the Month. And I, did I see her here this morning? No, no, no. Oh, too bad. That is uh, Jill Bonilla with Fast Signs. So congratulations to Jill. We'll make sure that she gets her um, certificate and um, also a certificate for the for a free breakfast as well. So we have a couple of events coming up. First of all, I'd like to let you know that next month for the Good Morning Oxnard Breakfast, um, we will be meeting at the Courtyard by Marriott, which is right across the parking lot. The Tower Club is going to be doing some uh, remodeling up here. So uh, they'll be under construction uh, apparently at that time. So just one month, we'll be over at the courtyard. Um, also for your calendars coming up, uh, Friday, we have a ribbon cutting at ABC Supply. And Wednesday on the 17th, we have a lunch and learn in the chamber office. It's part three of a three part series, but you didn't have to come to the first two parts. It's uh, entitled, Wow Your Customers. On Thursday the 18th, we're having our monthly mixer at the Whale's Tail in Channel Islands Harbor. Channel Islands Harbor, by the way, is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Uh, on Friday the 26th, we have our Business and Community Awards. That's also at the Courtyard? Yes, Courtyard. Um, and then Tuesday, June 30th, uh, the Dallas Cowboys Souvenir Program, uh, which there's information on your tables. Uh, will be delivered to the training camp. Cowboys will be arriving on the 28th of July, and um, I'm sorry, June 30th is the deadline for advertising. The Dallas Cowboys will be arriving on the 28th of July and will be here for a month. So if your business can capture some of the um, thousands and thousands of fans that arrive in Oxnard for that event, um, make sure you take a look at that. I'd like to thank you all for coming and especially thank all of our young entrepreneurs for the great job that you did this year, and go out there and have a great business day. Thanks.